don't know where to start, uh, so <laughs> let's talk about Inyemba, uh, a sleeping giant, uh, as you described recently. How could you lead uh, back such a giant to glory? Inyemba is one of the biggest clubs in Nigeria, if not the biggest. And um, yeah, in Africa, it's a recognized uh, team, you know, so I think they've, they've done well in the past. And uh, we are trying to see how we can bring them back, you know, to the past glory. I think we are working very hard. It's not easy, but um, at the end of the day, we want to get there, you know, so that's what we're doing now. Great. In the Confederation Cup, you defeated the Al-Ittahad, the Libyan team, in the second leg, but you never played the first leg. So tell us about what happened in Casablanca. Yeah, I think um, they did not give us the right information. Uh, I think we they moved the game from Libya to, to Tunisia. And um, yeah, we, we got our visa, transit visa, to get from Morocco, Casablanca, to Tunisia. But when we got to Casablanca, they told us uh, we, we, must be, we must have a, a certificate, vaccine certificate. And uh, most of the players um, did not have that. So... We're not allowed. We're not given access to, to Tunisia. So we were stocked in, in Morocco and uh, we tried and uh, walked in south with the authorities there and um, they gave us an um, arrival visa. It was so stressful. The match couldn't hold and uh, we had to come back to Nigeria and then play the second leg. Uh, while we've not we've not played the first leg, we we're playing the second leg, and uh, till date uh, we don't know what is happening. So we'll see what Calf is going to say. Um, do you think that taking the helm of uh, Nyimba would allow you to manage uh, the Nigerian national team uh, someday? Um, my concentration here is focused on Nyimba, you know, and uh, I'm not thinking about the national team. Let me think how I'm going to do a good job here. And um, yeah, the future, nobody knows the future. So um, I'm focused in Imba, see how I can do the best I can here. And um... all the luck uh, with Imba. Now let's travel to the past. 1994, you won the African Cup of Nations in, in Tunisia. But I have always asked myself what it feels playing against Zambia, because it was basically their second team, um, plus Kalusha Bualia. Was, uh, was that pressure? Um, the reason behind receiving an early goal in that match? Uh, no, we knew uh, they had a very good team. Uh, for them to qualify to play the finals uh, shows that uh, they had a very good team. So we're going for our second second medal. Nigeria had won it in 1980, and um, uh, we've played so many finals and lost. You know, so we never we never knew what to expect in that match. You know, we just went in there to give our best and. Um, Taking into consideration that uh, Zambia had a very good team, you know, so we were lucky and we had a good tournament and um, yeah, we won that game. Uh, in the same in the same year, you guys played in the World Cup like you had participated ten times. While the reality is, it was uh, your first ever uh, participation. Do you regret the lose against Italy? Two minutes before uh, the full time, you received the goal. Um, yeah, we regret to, to, to have lost against Italy. I think we had a good tournament, but uh, that was our first time. And uh, unfortunate that we lost to Italy, but um, that was a lesson for us. It wasn't a bad, bad tournament for Nigeria, being the first time going to the World Cup. I think uh, we did so well, but um, we fell short. So a very experienced team. And um, yeah, we should be happy with ourselves, you know, what we did. Yeah, um... I always say that losing on the field is hard, but losing outside the field is even harder. That applies with Nigeria in a couple of nations, uh, 60, 90, uh, 1996 and 1998. What was the feeling is yeah. such a political decision? Um, I think, um, who knows, maybe we would have won it if we went to South Africa. Maybe we would have won the cup, but um, it, it was all political stuff which had nothing to do with football, but you know. <laughs> so it was unfortunate though, because uh, that was when we had the strongest team from 94, 96, I, I think. The, and then we would, have done, we would have done a good job, you know, in South Africa, but we were not given the opportunity to go there and uh, perform. So it's uh, unfortunate, but um, some, some way you have to accept it. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, now let's get into 2022. A strong uh, encounter coming in Egypt and Nigeria, two African giants. It's a risky to have such a complicated game too early, or it's a chance to send a strong statement. If you win, if you win, um, it's going to send a strong statement. But if you lose, uh, there will be a lot of a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm a Nigerian. Uh, I, I hope for the best. You know, uh, we've been we've been struggling lately, but um, yeah, that first game they should approach it as if it's the finals. You know, so um, I think Egypt has a very very good team. Yeah, we'll see how we can match them. You know, if we can do that, I think and that will send a, a signal that uh, we are back. But um, that's that's what I expect Nigeria to do. You know, so they have to prepare very well, and um, hopefully we'll have the best result. Well, uh, speaking about Egypt, if you stop Salah, you stop Egypt. Do you agree? I don't think so. I think uh, football, you have 11 players. Everybody has their own role. Definitely Salah is uh, a key player for the team. And uh, even if you stop him, I think there are other players that can do magic. You know, that can do their best as well to make sure that they win. So um, if you add Salah, if he has a good day, then um, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> if he's not having a good day, definitely uh, you, you, have, you have a chance to win, you know. But uh, I think Egypt has been there. They've won that cup so many times. So definitely they, are, they, they have a good team to face Nigeria, you know. So I hope uh, Nigeria ha will have a good day. Okay, uh, Salah came seventh in the Ballon d'Or. Did he deserve more? Ballon d'Or sometimes has to do with uh, not only the club, with national team as well, you know. So uh, if he had won the, the African Cup of Nations, maybe that would have given him an edge, you know. You, know, you see players that were there, uh, they played the Euro like uh, Joninho, you know. He played, he won the Champions League, the European Cup with, uh, with uh, Italy. So these players are getting closer to, to, to winning it. You know? But if you only look at club, you know, club uh, achievement, sometimes it might not be enough you know, to win it. You know, Messi also uh, won the, the South, Afri South, South American uh, Championship. So that gave him an edge. You know? His personal achievement and uh, country achievement. You know? If you put that together, you have a lot of votes, you know, so I think that was why Messi, Messi could win it. So I think Salah, Salah, Salah time is coming. I think he's still young. His time is coming. Messi is getting older. Yeah, the, 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 the floor will be open for anybody to, to win it, you know, so Ronaldo is out of the way. Messi is still there. We'll see how the World Cup goes. If he can do well with Argentina, then he might have a chance. If not, some other player will win it. Uh, Emmanuel Amonique managed the Egyptian club Austria Matassa for a short period. Uh, also, Lahli uh, is living a successful era with uh, Pizzo Musima. Do you think that seeing sub Saharan coach in the Egyptian league is uh, normalized? Well, I think African coaches are doing well all over. Yeah, we are, we are all Africans, you know. An Egyptian can come and coach in Nigeria. You know, a Nigerian can go and coach in South Africa. I think. Uh, we shouldn't be focused on only coaches from Egypt to coach Egypt, Egyptian teams or coaches from Nigeria to coach. We are, let, let's open the borders and uh, make it an open area for, for coaches to move from one place to the other. You know, these border restrictions is always um, a problem. Uh, you see in Europe, Europe is um, one and uh, coaches move from one place to the other, you know, so... I think we should be doing that in Africa as well and uh, give people the opportunities, African coaches, to learn, to improve. And uh, that, that, will, that will lift us as, an, as, as a continent. Now let's get back uh, one more time to Korean Europe. Your biggest achievement, I, I think, uh, in 1995 was beating Milan with Ajax, uh, probably one of the strongest teams ever that Milan. Meanwhile, Ajax was formed. Uh, by mainly young players, legends late, but then you didn't have much experience. Did you believe in your chances before the match? Not really, because uh, we had we, we were in the same group with Milan that 1995, and uh, we've won them twice already. Uh, in the group stage, we, we, we beat them twice, and uh, meeting them in the final, we're thinking, is it going to be possible to win them three times in the same season? 
So we had a little bit of doubt, you know, if it's going to be possible. But uh, I think uh, we're, we're also confident. And we had a uh, former uh, AC Milan player with us, Frank Reichert, who uh, gave us some, some, some words of encouragement and uh, um, motivation. You know? So we went there and uh, played our football, which was not easy because they, 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 they were pressing all through the game. But uh, at the end of the day, a win, you take it at any time. You know? So the victory was uh, the most important thing for us, so, which we had. So we're happy with it and um, helped us in the second year, 1996, we played another final with an Italian team. But this time around, we lost to Juventus. Uh, it, was a, it was a good, good, good memory, good, good feelings to, to win the Champions League. It's always a good feeling to win it. Yeah, indeed. Ahora nos toca hablar sobre el Betis y hablar en español, por supuesto. Um, bueno, 25 años después, ¿cómo ve su huella, su llegado en el Verde Blanco? Eh, bueno, Betis, cuando yo estuve ahí en el Betis, o cuando fui al Betis, para mí no era un equipo conocido como Real Madrid-Barcelona, pero decidí eh, ir al Betis y luego ya no me arrepentí, no me arrepentí de nada. Fue una experiencia excepcional. La gente me cogió eh, como uno más ¿no? en el club y disfruté bastante mis cuatro años ahí en el Betis, así que no hay quejas. Eh, disfruté mucho con la afición del Betis y intenté disfrutar jugando al fútbol, nada más. So, uh, usted jugaba con uh, Dean Nelson, uh, que fue un fichajajo, pero nunca ha cumplido las uh, aspiraciones. ¿Por qué? Eh, bueno, eh, teníamos eh, buen equipo, pero Uh, aquella época, pues, uh, hubo problemas con el presidente uh, Lopera, que no, no quería pagar a algunos futbolistas, incluso a mí. Y luego ya decía que no, no, no había dinero, pero él se fue a, a, a fichar a un futbolista por 25 mil millones de pesetas. Uh, a partir de allí, o a raíz de allí empezó problemas ahí en el club. Y algunos futbolistas no querían jugar porque no cobraba eh, su contrato de imagen, todas estas historias. Allí empezó todo, los problemas. Así que el equipo, en vez de ir para arriba, empezó ya a bajar el nivel de juego, el nivel de ánimo, el nivel de todo. Y cuando llegó Denilson ya la plantilla estaba ya un poco tocado por los problemas que creó el presidente. Por eso no, no llegamos a, a hacer cosas grandes. Eh, bueno, de hecho, mi, mi, mi pregunta siguiente es sobre el presidente de la Opera, que era un hombre polémico. Uh, yo he leído una vez que, que ha invadido, invadido una fiesta de Halloween y, bueno, contrataba detectives privados para vigilar a los jugadores. Pues, ¿cómo, cómo era de Lopera como presidente, como persona? Bueno, él quería resultados, uh, sí o sí, pero uh, yo creo que hay muchas maneras de, de hacer las cosas y él tenía su manera de, de, de trabajar, manera de, de conseguir ¿no? información uh, sobre los futbolistas. Uh, pues, Uh, eh, para mí, cuando tú pagas bien a los futbolistas, tendrás resultados. Pero cuando ya tiene maneras de engañar a los futbolistas, pues uh, empezará problemas. Es lo que pasó. Uh, resultados, todo el mundo queremos resultados. Queremos la afición, los futbolistas queremos ganar. Pero con, hay que ganar con con una manera ¿no? eh, legal. Eh, tú quieres resultados, pero por la otra parte no está pagando a los futbolistas. Pues eh, allí empezó todo, los problemas que tuvimos hasta que el equipo bajó a segunda división y empezaron a salir futbolistas como Alfonso. Yo me fui al Mallorca. Algunos futbolistas fueron traspasados, cedidos. Pues... Eh, era una época difícil para, <ríe> eh, 
para el Betis y para algunos futbolistas. Así que, pero bueno, no hay que mirar al pasado. El equipo está mejor ahora. Hay gente profesionales que están en el club, que están trabajando día y noche para mejorar ¿no? la plantilla, para mejorar eh, el equipo. Da mucha satisfacción a la afición, que es más importante eh, allí en España. ¿Le emociona a usted ver al Vites ahora con los buenos resultados, con... Uh... Pues con, uh, con lo que está haciendo en, en Europa también, con Telegrín. Me alegro, me alegro. Hay mucha estabilidad en el club. Hay buenos futbolistas en el club. Están jugando muy bien, buen entrenador. Espero que el Betis algún día pueda aspirar ¿no? a ganar la Europa, Europa League e incluso luchar uh, por entrar en Champions. Es lo que mi deseo es para el Betis, para, para siempre estar allí, para el Betis luchando para entrar en Champions, si no es posible, en Europa League, intenta ¿no? ganar la, la Europa League, es mi deseo para el Betis, pero yo creo que hay mucha estabilidad en el club, y la gente está trabajando día y noche para, para que la cosa funcione ¿no? en el club. Um, usted uh, estaba muy cerca de, de, de firmar uh, por el Real Madrid, ¿eso es cierto? Sí, es lo que dice. Eh... ¿Qué hubiera si pasado? No, si, no, si no pasó, pues es porque no, no hay nada, ¿me entiendes? Acercamiento, pues sí, pero si al final no hubo acuerdo entre el Real Madrid y el Ajax, pues... Uh, el futbolista no puede cambiar esto. Uh, mi deseo, bueno, si Real Madrid era el más grande, seguramente que sí. Pero no estaba en mis manos poner los acuerdos ¿no? entre dos, dos clubes. Uh, el Ajax, el Real Madrid no, no hubo el acuerdo necesario para que yo pueda fichar por el Real Madrid. Así que yo me fui al Betis, que... En aquel momento apostó, ¿no? Por mí. Sí. Así que, bueno, no hay, no, no puedo lamentar, ¿no? Lo que no, no hubo. Lo, yo estoy muy contento por mi carrera, que estuve yo en el Betis, Mallorca, luego Inglaterra, con la selección, pues eh, no hay quejas. La verdad, estoy eh, muy agradecido por todo lo que he hecho, ¿no? En Europa. Los deseos, los deseos cumplidos. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. George. It was a pleasure having uh, you with us in Phil Gold. All the luck in the world for you um, with your mission in, in Nigeria, and we hope to see you soon again. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Adios. You Adios. <laughs>